Bentley is among the most luxurious performance cars in the world, handcrafted from some of the finest parts and materials available for the ultra-rich. But beneath all that beauty lies a tragic history. The man who founded Bentley rose his company to top glory during the 1920s, building some of the fastest, most durable and lucrative cars of his time, and even won five Le Mans races in the company's first 11 years of existence. But an unfortunate series of events would cause the company to come crashing down, and Bentley's founder himself would be discarded and forced to work for his arch rival at the time, Rolls-Royce. This is the story of a man who created one of the most fascinating car companies in the world, only to lose it all. The story of Bentley begins with the birth of a boy in London in 1888. Walter Owen Bentley was the youngest of nine children and was raised into a prosperous family thanks to his father, who made his fortune selling silk and wool. From an early age, Walter grew up differently than what his family had hoped for and didn't particularly enjoy the idea of school. Instead, he was fascinated by anything mechanical, especially things that moved. This became clear when at the age of nine, Walter bought a second-hand bicycle and dismantled it for the sole purpose of seeing how it worked. However, Walter's greatest love at the time was for trains and wanted nothing more than to be a train engineer. Thus, in 1904, at the age of 16, Bentley dropped out of school, left home, and went to work as an apprentice at the Great Northern Railway in Doncaster. But it was also around this time when automobiles were slowly becoming popular around the globe. But surprisingly enough, Bentley was not interested in them. In fact, he hated cars, and at one point in his career, even remarked that an automobile was nothing more than a disgraceful vehicle that splashed people with mud. However, despite his sharp focus on trains, Bentley's interest in the railways began to fade as he realized that automobiles and motorcycles were not only becoming the future of transportation, but also very popular in race competitions. Here, any talented engineer could put his skills to the test and push the boundaries of how fast a vehicle can go. This factor alone fascinated him and led him to buy his very first motor vehicle at the age of 18, a belt drive quadrant motorcycle made by a British motorbike manufacturer. With the help of his brother Horace and several co-workers from the railway, Bentley made a few adjustments to the bike and began riding it himself at local race competitions. To the surprise of many, his motorcycle won multiple gold medals and race trials from 1906 to 1908. And during the next few years, Walter became so obsessed with racing, he was now competing in the world's biggest and most dangerous motorcycle racing event, the Isle of Man TT. Unfortunately, the 21-year-old crashed on his opening lap and never managed to win the tournament in either of the two times he participated at the Tourist Trophy race. However, Bentley's persistent passion for racing didn't let those setbacks stop him from landing several other victories along the way, and most importantly, mastering his skills at refining engine performance. But by this point, Bentley knew where his finish line was, because there was something else that had captured his passion, something that he had once considered disgraceful to the public, yet now found himself fully committed to learning more about it, and was none other than entering the car business. In the year 1910, and at the age of 22, Walter Bentley kickstarted his new career at the National Motor Cab Company in Hammersmith, London, where he found himself in charge of maintaining and operating hundreds of Unix London taxicabs. While the job was a little hectic at the time, Bentley became obsessed with the automobile and developed a true passion for its engine and the mechanisms behind it. But just two years into his job, news of his mother's death reached the young man who rushed back home to pay his final respects, promising his employers he'd soon return to work. However, after the burial, Walter discovered his mother had left him an inheritance of 2,000 British pounds. Here, he was left with two choices, 
He could either save the money and go back to his job or risk it all to open a car business. As you might have guessed, he went with the car business and got a place in London where he specialized in selling automobiles from a London-based franchise known as Dorio, Flandrin, and Perron, which was a French car manufacturer. However, while these vehicles were quick and well-made, Walter didn't particularly like the way the company was being run. So he joined forces with his brother Horace to buy out the franchise, changed its name to Bentley & Bentley, and took over the showrooms in London. As a way to promote their new company, the brothers worked on improving and refining their vehicle's engines and showcasing them to several race competitions, eventually setting a 10-lap record at one of the most popular racetracks at the time, Brooklands, for a 2.0-liter car at 66.7 miles per hour. Despite its record-breaking achievement, Walter was still not impressed with the performance of his vehicles. He thought they were too heavy, and reasoned that if he somehow made the cars a little lighter, then he could boost their performance even more. A few months later, the Bentley brothers traveled to France, where Walter discovered a decorative piece of alloy, which is a mixture of chemicals that includes some sort of metal. As he picked it up, he noticed how lightweight the metal was and saw that it was made from a unique silver material, aluminum. You see, at the time, most engine pistons were made of steel or cast iron, which made the vehicles much heavier. Walter figured that if he used aluminum instead, he could potentially lower the vehicle's weight by a significant degree. However, building a piston of aluminum wasn't going to be easy. As a metal, aluminum is not as strong or as heat resistant as steel or cast iron, and would usually melt once it was fitted into a working car. Therefore, Bentley began experimenting with a mixture of other chemicals, and after much trial and error, he eventually settled on a formula of 88% aluminum and 12% copper. This experiment, just as he expected, proved to be successful and dramatically improved the vehicle's performance. The cars were not only lighter, but much faster, and this enabled Walter to set multiple speed records in 1913 and 1914 most notably breaking the record for the fastest half-mile run in Brooklyn's at 89.7 miles per hour. Walter's accomplishments on the racetrack brought him and his company to greater publicity and press coverage, giving them the perfect opportunity to create their own cars and build a new company. But then, disaster struck. Right before creating his dream company, the First World War broke out and Bentley had no choice but to bring his ambitious plans to a halt. Suddenly, British engineers stopped competing against each other and began joining forces in the fight against Germany. It was then that Bentley first revealed the secret of his alloy pistons to Mr. Henry Royce, who adopted the concept of aluminum pistons and applied it to his designs for the Rolls-Royce Eagle, an aircraft engine that proved very effective for the British Air Force. Bentley, on the other hand, was asked by the government to produce a modified version of their rotary aircraft engines, in which Walter used his aluminum pistons to design the Bentley BR-1. His new aircraft engine made the British fighters more powerful and reliable than their previous versions, which were prone to overheating and seizing up during combat, and went on to become the most successful fighter aircraft engines in the war helping the country win its battles against the Germans and the Central Powers. After the war ended, Bentley was awarded an MBE by the British Empire and received 8,000 British pounds from the Commission of Awards to Inventors, which was just the capital he needed to fulfill his dream and finally open his very own automobile company in 1919. His approach was simple. We are going to make a fast car, a good car, the best in its class. And with that, Bentley Motors was born. Hearing this story of Bentley shows how difficult it was to learn any valuable skills back then, especially car engineering. Bentley's founder had to take in years of experience and hardships to find the right information. But nowadays, you can easily learn anything online. And the best way to learn is with Brilliant.org. Why I personally love Brilliant is because it's not just online learning. It's interactive and perfect for busy people. 
Tough topics are simplified in bite-sized lessons. You gradually master whole topics in as little as 15 minutes a day. I've recently been exploring their Computer Science Foundation learning path which begins at the fundamentals of computer science, working up to programming and neural networks. It was always a topic I was interested in, but learning it just seemed too intimidating. However, Brilliant has made it a low pressure and exciting new skill for me to learn. The best thing about it is that it's fun. Interactive puzzles, riddles, and games. It's not just memorizing facts. Plus, at the same time, you learn real useful skills that you can apply to potentially level up your professional career. Right now, you'll get a 30-day free trial if you visit brilliant.org slash big company, or click on the link in the description below now to check it out. The first 200 of you will also get 20% off from your annual premium subscription. Thanks to Brilliant for sponsoring this video. Now, back to Bentley. During the next three years, Walter and former British war pilot Clive Gallup worked on designing the first ever Bentley car out of a small workshop in Cricklewood. The result was the Bentley 3 liter, a super advanced vehicle for its time as the world's first production car engine with four valves per cylinder, dual spark plugs, and an overhead camshaft. Bentley immediately took their car to local races and hill climb events, where they quickly found success and became a huge phenomenon thanks to the vehicle's looks and performance. By 1922, the car participated at one of the biggest races in America, the Indianapolis 500, earning 13th place in its debut. Due to the speed and durability of the Bentley 3 liter, some had suggested that Walter take his vehicle to the first 24 hours of Le Mans in 1923. But Walter responded by saying, I think the whole thing is crazy. Cars aren't designed to stand that kind of strain for 24 hours. While Bentley's founder doubted the race competition, two of his own buyers by the names of John Duff and Frank Clement took their own Bentley car to race at the 24 Hours of Le Mans in 1923, where they finished fourth place while also setting the fastest lap of the race. These results completely changed Walter's mind, and he entered an official factory team the following year, in which John Duff achieved a first place victory at Le Mans in his Bentley 3 liter sport. The fact that the Bentley company had gone from selling their first vehicle to winning the biggest racing platform on the planet in just three short years was beyond Walter's wildest imagination. But while these victories gave the Bentley brand enormous publicity, they had trouble turning their claim into financial success. The business of racing cars and overall high-cost production of their vehicles grew far too expensive for Walter, who desperately needed to find more capital in order for Bentley to survive. As he struggled to make ends meet, a wealthy diamond mine heir by the name of Wolf Bernato bought his first Bentley in 1925 and loved it so much, he began investing his own cash into Bentley Motors, eventually taking control of the company in 1926. He and a group of other independently wealthy racers continued to take the company to more and more race competitions, while Walter focused on designing and engineering the next models. Together, they became known as the Bentley Boys and played a major role in building up the brand's prestigious reputation. During their time in the company, Bentley released two more models, the 4.5 liter and the Bentley Speed 6, which were incredibly powerful, big, and fast for their time. The Bentley boys casually drove these cars for fun, as well as on the racetrack, where they won numerous races and motorsports events. Most notably, an astonishing four consecutive wins at the 24 Hours of Le Mans from 1927 to 1930. During this period, the Bentley boys made international headlines time and time again, not only for their accomplishments on the racetrack, but off the track as well. They were known for being rich playboys who lived an adventurous lifestyle. They loved to party and drink, place bets on the rising stock prices, and practically speaking, they did racing on the side. They all came from military backgrounds, so surviving the horrors of the First World War probably motivated them to enjoy life as much as they could. Their passion for life and deep love for challenges got them involved in many other ambitious and daring situations. One example of this 
was when Wolf Bernardo raced in his Bentley Speed 6 against an express train from France called Le Train Bleu, which traveled across the country. To prove that Bentley cars were much faster than the railways, Bernardo bet 100 pounds that he would start in Cannes at the same time the train departed and would finish in London before the train even reached Calais. Although he was met with obstacles, such as running out of fuel and bursting his tire along the way, Bernardo managed to set foot in London, order his cocktail, and take a sip on his glass just four minutes before the train arrived in Calais. At the time, it seemed like the Bentley brand and their crew couldn't get better publicity and admiration from the public, and there were no signs of slowing down. However, after winning their fifth 24 Hours of Le Mans in 1930, the company sadly stepped down from racing, claiming they'd learned everything they needed to know about speed and reliability. By then, Walter had turned his attention to designing a new automobile that would still become his biggest creation yet, the Bentley 8-liter. The 8-liter was among the longest and most luxurious cars in the world and was praised for being the fastest and most durable Bentley there was. While other production cars at the time had top speeds of 50 to 60 miles per hour, the 8-liter was proven to go above 100 miles per hour. To top it off, despite its large and powerful engine, the car featured something that was unheard of at the time. It ran dead silent. It was truly a luxury phenomenon and exactly what Walter Bentley had envisioned for the company. A true racing car with touring accessories. But a dark time was right around the corner for the company, and Walter Bentley would soon find himself wanting to part ways from the same company he had built with his heart and soul. When the 8-liter was released in 1930, the timing couldn't be worse. Wall Street had recently crashed, and the Great Depression quickly followed suit, so the demand for expensive luxury vehicles drastically dwindled. Although Bentley was a massive success on the track, their cars cost too much to produce, especially their luxurious 8-liter, which ultimately became the main reason behind the company's bankruptcy in 1931. As a result, Bentley was put up for sale to the highest bidder and was quickly bought by an anonymous company. However, this anonymous company turned out to be Bentley's greatest arch rival in disguise, Rolls-Royce, who only bought the brand as a way of killing off the competition of their own vehicles. Walter was furious and devastated after finding out, especially because he was powerless to do anything about it. Everything else that Bentley owned was sold including Bentley's factory at Cricklewood, while operations were moved to Derby. These were the darkest times for Walter, who also went through a divorce that same year, and soon after lost his personal transport when Rolls-Royce asked him to return his personal Bentley 8-liter. As if that wasn't enough, Walter was court-ordered to work under Rolls-Royce management from 1932 to 1935, where he was isolated in London and Europe, working as a test driver and serving customers for the same company he had once built with his heart and soul. He now found himself wanting to leave Bentley Motors. He had no power or influence over their designs or engineering, and was left watching as Rolls-Royce used the Bentley name for their own purposes. After his contract ended in 1935, Walter finally left the company with a sense of freedom and spent the rest of his life working for other British luxury car companies until his final retirement. He died with no children at age 82 in 1971. Bentley Motors, on the other hand, stopped their production until 1933 when they released their first model under Rolls-Royce, the three and a half liter. Marketed as the silent sport car, the company set out to compete on quality and grace rather than its sporting reputation. This, however, never allowed Bentley to truly make a name for itself, despite launching brilliant and stylish models such as the Bentley S-Series, the T-Series, the Bentley Mark V, and the R-Type. Nearly all cars released by Bentley Motors during this period were just about identical to Rolls-Royce, since the two companies shared the same chassis and engines. The only way to differentiate them was by the looks of their badges and their unique radiator sounds, which upset many traditional buyers. 
As time went by, Bentley's sales fell to a meager 5% of Rolls-Royce's total production line, and Rolls-Royce itself ran into their own financial crisis during the 1970s, leading the company to sell its motor car division, including Bentley, to an engineering firm called Vickers in 1980. Under Vickers, the company set out to revive Bentley's past racing reputation, and new, faster models rolled out from the factory floor, such as the Bentley Mulsanne, the Bentley Azure, the Continental R, and Turbo R. While all these vehicles helped the company regain some traction as a luxury sports car during the 80s and 90s, the Bentley Renaissance didn't really begin until 1998, when Volkswagen acquired the company. Here, they once again aimed to bring back their racing heritage, only this time, they went the old-fashioned way. Bentley was back at the 24 Hours of Le Mans in 2001, after 70 years of absence, and managed to sweep in third place with their Bentley Speed 8 prototype. Only two years later, the Speed 8 would pull off a terrific first and second place at the 2003 Le Mans race. And just a few months later, a brand new model hit the public market, the Bentley Continental GT. This 6-liter W12 engine powered an overwhelming 552 horsepower and was among the fastest luxury cars in the world, reaching a top speed of 190 miles per hour. Soon after, sales shot up from 800 total Bentleys per year to over 7,000 Continental GTs per year alone marking the company's highest sales in history. Bentley then followed suit with extraordinary new models, like the Bentley Flying Spur, the new Mulsanne edition, and their most popular model, the SUV Bentayga. Each one of them featuring hand-built craftsmanship, powerful engines, and most importantly, fast speed performance, helping the company remain with strong sales ever since. It's safe to say that Bentley is now doing better than ever, but it's crazy to think that almost a century ago, a small group of men were able to build such a resilient brand in just 10 short years. And that same brand they created has persevered and thrived in Bentley's winged bee emblem. But Walter Bentley is not the only auto industry legend with a tragic history. I've previously covered the stories of both Chevrolet and Bugatti, where I laid out the journeys of the men who built these successful car brands yet tragically ended up losing it all. So if you want to know more about those stories, just click here and I'll see you there. Until then, make sure to subscribe and like the video. I'll catch you in the next one.